Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us on your Thursday. I'm Sophie Erber. A much talked about Siouxland murder trial is finally underway tonight in Dakota County District Court. Jury selection in the trial of Andre Serber wrapped up on Wednesday with testimony beginning this morning. The often delayed trial dates back to November of 2016. That is when Serber was arrested and charged in connection with the shooting death and dismemberment of Craig Kubik. After twice being ruled mentally unfit to stand trial, a judge cleared the way for Serber's case in January of this year. Just last week, Serber asked to represent himself in court. The judge later ruled against that, setting up today's testimony. KCAU 9's Jessica Watson spent her morning in the court and shares what happened. And it's our top story at 5. After more than three years' delays, the state of Nebraska opened its case against Andre Serber by calling Emerson Hubbard Superintendent Lindsay Bodet. She told jurors that in November of 2016, she requested law enforcement make a welfare check on Craig Kubik after his son told classmates his father was dead. Said, tell me what happened. He said, my dad's dead. My dad's dead. We can't find him. There's blood everywhere. And so I just think that I would feel better if I just called you guys and at least reported that. With how adamant he was, something just wasn't right. Um, he would tell stories, and so you have to kind of weed through five-year-old stories, but he was just very persistent about his father being dead. On November 2nd, 2016, Dakota County Sheriff Chris Kleinberg conducted that welfare check and told jurors even though Kubik was not located, he immediately knew that there was a problem. Was there enough blood there, sir, that you thought whoever or whatever left it might be no longer alive? And I don't think there was that much. There was enough just to tell me any clues ever this was injured seriously. Later that same day, authorities located Kubik's body parts and a car at the abandoned home of Andre Serber. I was out there looking for a very injured or possibly unconscious man. And when I seen that, I kind of, that's what I remember thinking. Testimony resumes Friday morning at the Dakota County Courthouse. Jessica Watson, KCAU 9 News. And be sure to follow for regular updates on this trial on our website at SiouxlandProud.com. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds tonight ordering all bars shut down in six Iowa counties. This in response to the surging number of COVID-19 cases, blamed in part on young people and students ignoring mask and social distancing guidelines within those establishments. Now those counties tonight include Blackhawk, Dallas, Johnson, Lynn, Polk, and Story. Restaurants that sell alcohol in those six counties are permitted to remain open, but they must also stop selling alco alcohol after 10 p.m. each night. And I am again calling on all peace officers in the state to assist in the enforcement of these measures, as well as those in the proclamation that I signed last week. That proclamation also requires Iowans holding gatherings of more than 10 people to ensure social distancing is kept at six feet. Reynolds also strongly encourages all Iowans to wear face coverings when out in public. And the governor's new proclamation is coming down just as Morningside College confirms three positive cases of COVID-19 late this afternoon. We're told all close contacts have been alerted to this case. The college plans to set up on-campus testing for students, staff, and faculty, plus an online dashboard to display case count information also set to launch next week. The South Dakota Department of Health is correcting COVID-19 case reports tonight after a system error was discovered. That error leaving 280 positive tests unreported over the past two days now. Those cases are currently included in the state's report for today. That number reading 343 new cases. Let's take a quick look now at the latest COVID-19 numbers across the rest of Siouxland and Woodbury County. Health officials reporting 15 new cases. Currently, there are 18 patients hospitalized for coronavirus. Now, across the river, Dakota County officials report six new positive COVID-19 tests for a total of more than 1,900 cases. In South Dakota, Clay County listed as substantial community spread tonight, reporting 99 active cases. A positive case of COVID-19 is being reported at Crofton Community Schools Junior Senior High School. Now, it's unknown if this case is a student or a staff member, but according to a statement from that school, both the North Central District Health Department and the school are currently requesting that case to self-isolate. All close contacts of that positive case are also being asked to self-quarantine this evening. 
Elsewhere in Nebraska, Pender Public Schools preschool will be closed tomorrow, Friday. This after a staff member was exposed to the virus. According to a statement on that school's website, the limited availability of substitute teachers also contributing to this closure. At this time, no preschool students have been exposed to COVID-19. Classes are set to resume in two weeks. That is September 10th. Football season kicks off tomorrow night, but things will look a bit different this year for both the players and for the fans. KCAU 9 spoke with the Bishop Heelan Athletic Director, and he says the Friday night game will be open to those who have received wristbands. So each player and coach is allowed, uh, they, they're going to be given four wristbands today, and they can give those wristbands out to whoever they choose. Um, so we're just trying to keep our, our attendance as, as low as possible so people are allowed to space out. Bishop Heelan will be requiring fans to wear masks when entering their stadium. Another team that will hit the field Friday is Sioux Center. They're following suit and operating at just 50% capacity. We have roped off bleachers. We brought in eight different sections so that we can have um, just spread people out. And there will be plenty of room with the, with the new bleachers we have and, and the areas to stand. I, I have no worry that at 50% capacity we won't be able to hold everybody. We will, we will get everybody in. Both athletic directors tonight say if and when a team member tests positive with COVID-19, it will be handled on a case-by-case -case basis as they are working closely with their local health departments. Time now to turn our attention to the weather. Meteorologist Marcus Beasley standing by. And Marcus, a hot week to start the high school football season. I'm sure those guys are hoping for a little bit of cooler temperatures in the area. That's right, Sophie. Another hot day today. It's been hot all week long. And there is a little bit of relief in sight, but that relief not coming today. We're seeing those temperatures still in the 90s out there. We got up to 92 in Sioux City today for your high temperature. 94 in Wayne as well as Norfolk. A high of 91 in Yankton and Lamars today. 93 in Cherokee and Storm Lake as well as Carroll. So most of Siouxland reaching up at least into the lower 90s today. Forecast lows tonight, those will drop down into the upper 60s to right around 70 degrees. So again, a very similar night temperature wise compared to the last few nights. The difference tonight, we're going to have a weaker cold front move through that could bring some strong to severe thunderstorms later tonight. I'll have more details on that in the 9 on 9. Sophie? All right, thanks a lot, Marcus. Well, as Tropical Storm Laura moves north, some areas are already moving into recovery mode tonight. Peyton Lo Cicero checks in on some residents in the St. Mary Parish where the wind was their biggest problem. Driving into St. Mary Parish, it's easy to see the destruction left in the wake of Hurricane Laura. It didn't get much better closer to town. Normally, Franklin would be a charming place. Now it's a ghost town. Shops boarded up, streets vacant, 100-year-old trees lay flat, and homes still dark. And last night it was just sporadic. You know, it would blow and then it'd stop and it'd rain and it'd blow. And of course we had the tornado warnings and... I'm in Jinnerette, which is one town over from Franklin, where residents woke up this morning with the same kind of situation. Lots of flooding in all of their roads. Both towns of Franklin and Jennerette sustained winds that did most of the damage and caused most of the fear. It woke my wife up. She went to bed about 11 o'clock. Never did wake my baby up. But uh, the wind blowed pretty hard. I have a couple of pretty big limbs in the back that blowed off. Lucky to still have power when he woke up, Peck was worried for his friends across town. I went around, checked on some friends of mine, and... Uh, they seem to be doing good, and I didn't see a tremendous amount of damage, a little bit limbs and stuff like that, but that was about it. St. Mary Parish is right on the line that divides the state, where one side is devastated, but this side was spared. Turning now to politics, the final night of the Republican National Convention gets underway this evening. It's when President Donald Trump is set to give his official acceptance speech from the White House South Lawn. The president expected to officially reveal the federal government's purchase of rapid COVID-19 tests. These tests produced by Abbott Laboratories receiving emergency youth authorita authorization from the FDA. That was last week. The Riverside Park tennis courts now have a new look this evening. These courts have been resurfaced and include eight new pickleball courts. The official ribbon cutting there, two tennis courts. They also have new nets and facing. The director for Parks and Rec says the price tag on this project is $120,000. To come from having nothing in February to having something here in August uh, 
fast-tracked the project. Couldn't have turned out any better. These courts are pristine, and we're really excited for everybody to get the chance to use them. These courts are open to the public during official park hours. That's from 7 in the morning until 11 p.m. After months of being closed down, Gallery 103 in the Ho-Chuck Center is finally reopening on a larger scale, too. Friday and Saturday, the gallery will be hosting its first art show that night since being closed. It will be open to the public. Social distancing measures will have to be in place. One artist tells KCAU they are just excited to finally showcase art that has not been seen since March. The goal for two men tonight, 100 days of running. Coming up, we're taking a closer look at their mission and the larger movement they're now a part of. And in weather, we are going to see some thunderstorm chances in the coming days. We'll cool down a little bit here in the next few days and looks like next week a bigger cool down with temperatures in the 70s. Details on that coming up after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Herber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. I was out on a golf course this morning, mm. and it was beautiful, but <laughs> I quickly realized how hot yeah. it actually was. Really yeah. nice, though. Yeah, it heats up really quickly in the morning once the sun comes up. Oh, yeah. Here in the summer, the heat turns up as much as that sun coming up there in the distance. But outside today, we are seeing plenty of sunshine here throughout Siouxland. The view from the KCAU 9 studio brought to you by the Port Neal Welding Company showing that we are seeing those sunny, clear skies. Again, mostly cloud free outside. You might see a stray cloud here or there, but for the most part, we're seeing crystal clear skies throughout Siouxland. Temperatures out there in the lower 90s. So again, reaching up into the 90s here throughout Siouxland. It's been a hot week all week long, and we're continuing to see that heat out there. They're now at 92 in Sioux City and Cherokee, 90 degrees in Orange City, 91 in Yankton, 94 in Wayne as well as Norfolk. We're seeing 93 in Carroll Denison, currently at 95 degrees. Taking a look at heat index values, those are in the upper 90s. It feels like 99 in Sioux City as well as Wayne, 98 for that heat index value in Norfolk, 97 in Yankton, 95 in Lamar's, 97 in Cherokee, and 96 in Storm Lake. So pretty humid outside, and with that humidity, we could see a few thunderstorms pop up tonight as a weak cold front is going to slide through the area. Still seems like we're above where we should be for this time oh, yeah. of year. We definitely are right now, but there's some relief and hopefully some rain chances, but it doesn't look like enough to really put much of a dent into that drought. I was going to say, the drought's bad, but I'm enjoying the warm weather. Oh, yeah. Especially because sure I know are. fall and winter is coming. It's Thanks coming. a lot, Marcus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the Sioux City Police Department reporting an increase in car thefts. This is over the past two months' time. Officials say a majority happened when people leave their car doors unlocked or they leave their valuables out in plain sight, making them easy targets. To find out some steps you could take now to protect yourself and your car, you can read the full story on our website. It's posted on SiouxlandProud.com or check out our free mobile news app. How can something as small as a bread tag help people in a wheelchair? We'll show you the creative twist a woman is putting on her fundraising efforts. That story is coming up. And at 10 miles a day, a pair of Indiana men have set themselves for a lofty goal. We'll explain their mission to you next. At KCAU 9, we are proud to bring you the best local news in Siouxland. And we want to let you know about a national newscast that you can watch in prime time. News Nation on WGN America. Welcome back. Two Indianapolis men are running 10 miles a day, 100 days in a row, all part of a project called 1001 City. We try to keep it simple. Just, just go out, run, connect with our neighbors, and the magic just happens from there. The magic isn't how fast they run or even how far. It's about what happens when they stop along the way. It doesn't take much uh, before people just really want to talk. And, uh, and be heard, and um, that's what we want to be there for. Casey Kraus and Trevor DeWitt started a project called 1001 City. They're running 10 miles a day for 100 days in a row. That's 1,000 miles all throughout Indianapolis. Halfway through the 1,000-mile challenge, they started raising money and giving someone they meet on their run a water bottle, a note, and money to go towards a new pair of shoes. New shoe days can represent that fresh start for anybody, whether it's for school, um, for a job, or maybe it's a health and fitness journey. On day 35, it was Shauna who mentioned she was wearing her daughter's sandals, so they thought she could use her own pair of shoes. Last week, it was Cliff, a 21-year-old who walked three hours across town to give his cousin money so she could buy food for her family. So much joy. Uh, we, you know, we've had people that have teared up and been speechless. Uh, we've had people jump for joy. We've, we've had people cry with us, laugh with us. Uh, 
we've even prayed with people. Their legs are tired, but their hearts are full, knowing their miles are making a difference in their city. Well, millions of bread tags coming together all for a good cause. We'll show you how a woman is using them to help those living with disabilities next. An Indiana woman looking for help tonight, continuing her mission of helping people who use wheelchairs. How does she do it? With some help from a massive collection of bread tags. Katiara Winfrey has her story. Collecting. Many people have this hobby, but for some, it's a passion. Danielle Rothschild's collection happens to be bread tags. And in just four years, she's collected 3.5 million of them. I know, especially me, I've eaten a lot of bread um, over the quarantine. But all this didn't come just from her. They were donated, and not just by small bags, but by the thousands. We first introduced you to her three years ago, just as she was getting her nonprofit, Danielle Cares for Chairs, off the ground. She takes the tags, recycles them, and the money from it, she uses them to buy mobility products to donate. I currently have given away seven mobility products to precious kids. She's hoping to virtually donate another one by the end of the year, but the pandemic has slowed things down a bit. The restaurants she once relied on to donate tags can't do it anymore for sanitary reasons. Definitely during this pandemic, if you guys can collect, that'd be amazing. I'm trying to make the biggest impact at possible, and I know just doing some small, simple community service can help a lot. But it's no time for slowing down. For a few young helpers, she says they've stepped up in a big way, and after four years, she's already eyeing her replacements. Let's take a quick live look outside now. Marcus has another check on our forecast coming up next. Stay with us. Before we wrap up here at 5, let's check in now with Tim for what's coming up at 6. He's in the newsroom. Hi, Tim. Hey, good afternoon. You know, the football season is here, and it's going to be unlike any other that we've known for not only the players, but also the fans. Our Marina Box sat down with two seniors this afternoon to find out if they're at all worried about headed into this COVID season of football. We'll have that coming up at 6. On the subject of football, eight Nebraska football players, including one from Siouxland, are suing the Big Ten Conference, asking a judge to reverse the conference's plan to not play this ball. Jake takes a look at that in sports. And the growing game of pickleball has a new home in Sioux City. Park and Rec workers debuting new courts for the game that resembles tennis out at Riverside Park today. What it costs to build that new complex coming up at 6. And Sophie, I hear you've played a game or two. I have played pickleball and tennis too because I was a tennis player, but okay. pickleball was kind of the fun short game. So thanks, Tim. Looking forward to that. And Marcus, a quick check on our weather. Mm -hmm. Might be a little hot for pickleball today. Yeah, a little hot to really do anything outside. Again, we're seeing those lower 90s out there. Overnight tonight, temperatures, they will drop into the upper 60s. We might see a few thunderstorms, possibly severe weather in northern Siouxland, and tomorrow a little bit cooler. All right. Thanks so much, Marcus, and thank you for joining us. Have a great evening. I'll see you back here at 6. Good night.